All righty, ladies and gentlemen, and we are on to the rift for game two between Sam Houston State Esports White and the CC Red Tails. Sam Houston off to a pretty convincing lead in this series after that first game. Was a little bit rough in the early game. Did struggle a little bit giving over some of those early kills, especially in the top lane. But quickly managed to turn that around. Zodiac having a phenomenal performance on that Jinx and I think a good ban away here by this Red Tail squad. We're now going to have to be wary of the invade. I don't know if they spotted this out. Is Sam Houston waiting here. Oh no. Arctic, he's walking up. I think that they see it. Ping's there. Question mark ping's going down. Will these two groups actually avoid each other? Surely somebody has to die. Lyro suspects something. People walking up there. It's going to get the flash, but no! Misses the hook! Oh, you hate to see it. Oh, and it's the sad cat emoji coming out because it is sad. You hate to see it. Blitzquank crashing forward, missing that hook. It's disappointing, I know. Could have been an early game kill, but it wasn't. Sam Houston, though, going to walk back towards their side of the map. And it's going to be... I think a parallel start here for both of these junglers is agreed. Just not sure whether or not he wants to make his way down in there. He is instead going to go towards that top lane. So will have a late start and is going to be behind Dragonks on the Zinhao. He's just going to go ahead and pick up this blue buff and then path towards that top side after picking up the remainder of the camps here. An interesting draft selection, I think, for the side uh, of this Red Tail squad because it is a departure for what they were trying to do last time. This, this comp makes a little bit more sense in terms of the CC. I don't know how I feel about the Garen just because... Uh, it is a pick that can be punished a little bit harder, but does dominate sort of in the early late in trading. Um, does struggle towards the late game, though. Um, especially when you consider some of the carries here that are on the side of the Sam Houston squad. is going to get shredded away. And a pretty good mix of damage here for the Sam Houston squad as well. So, is going to have to try and find a way to navigate that itemization difficulties. Lyro's just being obnoxious here, zoning both members here off of any sort of experience or farm. And again, I think one of the most important things for this game is going to be to see how early these... Junglers are able to get involved. The Texas A. Or they just land a shock there. Gazer dropping the ignite on top of him. One more auto would do it. Does get the first blood. So Texas A dropping again in that top lane early. That early kill will go going to go over to the Garen. And without even the need for junglers to get involved in that one, this Red Tails top laner making something happen there. Starting to see this obnoxious trading pattern early, though, from the Ophelia. It's just difficult to get anywhere near him, and already a significant CS lead in that bot lane. A large wave here, massive wave getting stacked here, so a lot of this XP, while still going to be collected, not going to come with any sort of gold. That turret going to hit away to lunch with those minions, and Sam Houston trying to shove that even closer right now to deny as much as they can from this bot lane, because that really is, that's your, your winning condition for the Sam Houston squad. You know, beyond the Lux and, you know, beyond getting a couple of kills with the Zinhao in terms of that early dueling with the, the Jax, it's going to be making sure that that Aphelios gets really strong really quickly and making sure that scaling goes according to plan. Make sure you don't drop too much health and don't get killed in that bot lane because Aphelios is a champion that struggles if it does fall behind. Now, if it's left to its own devices and just has time to scale, like it's a menace to deal with and it's incredibly obnoxious in terms of trying to trade onto it in this lane, but... If it does fall behind, it takes a little while for it to get back on. As Lyra's going to land the hook right now. Arctic deciding not to blow the flash yet. And a decent trade of damage there by Zodiac. As it is going to be red and blue. But not quite that dangerous red and white. But certainly enough to trade. As Texas A just continuing to trade health bars here in this top lane. It is only a long sword for Garen. So not necessarily had any chance to really spend any of that money. Especially with Texas A having the teleport there, so forcing that Red Tails top laner to stay in the lane for longer periods of time. And eventually that'll start to affect the matchup as the Mundo becomes more and more tanky. Lyros is going to land the hook off of the root from Zodiac. Heal's going to come out there and Arctic dropping ever so low. Was waiting just to see if maybe Zodiac had the last little bit of damage. Is Slam Daddy going to land... CC down on top of it, though. Flash out for Puppy Cat. Not enough there, though. Is Dragon's going to kill Slam? Can he turn this around? Does have the level, does have Conqueror. Agreed, just trying to find his way out of there. Dash in from Drake. Trying to see if he can land that last little knockup. Is going to drop the one more auto attack. Did it. And Agreed just going to pick up one for himself. So ultimately a one for two trait in that mid lane. Is that Caustic Field dropping for... 
the Cassiopeia, making it very difficult for any of those Sam Houston members to try and trade onto her. So, great outplay there. And knowing especially where to put that too, knowing that Drake Ganks had to walk through it in order to get on top of the cast. Yes, does end up dropping in the end, but still a phenomenal trade there by the Red Tail mid laner. Well, bot lane dominance here for Sam Houston, just continuing to shove these waves in over and over. Now, Egregious is here. Lyros is likely going to get caught here. Does not have flash. And is not likely going to be able to get out of this one as it is going to be Counter-Strike activated there to walk up Lyros. And the cast here just for good measure. Grounding goes down on top of it. Lyros just wasted time. Archie going to pick that one up. And again, similar story to what we saw in his first game. This Red Tail squad getting out to an early lead. 4-1 and one so far within the first couple of minutes. And so far, we're looking about a kill a minute. Of course, it flips over that once we hit the six-minute mark. But it's going to be early dragon going the way of this Red Tail squad. And I like the adjustment. I like that they've decided that they want to go ahead and get that. Is no! Puppy Cat going to deny it! And Slam getting ultimate up by the dragon hit as well. Is Puppy Cat just going to be able to trade this one? Slam. Oh, he's going to die to this one. It's a tragic play. As Wind Becomes Lightning going to be enough to knock Slam down. A fantastic catch out there by Puppy Cat. Ultimate going down on top of Texas. He does not have ultimate here unless he can manage to get a couple of those minions. Just playing ring around the ruggy Rosie. With this Garen, just wasting time. Dragon going to go the way of Sam Houston. And Gazer, just trying to find a way to get on top of Texas there. Decides he wants to take this. If he waits too much longer, the Texas might tick over to seven if he can get some of these minions to die. Teleport coming up for Puppy Cat. Gazer has overstayed this. He has lingered too long. He might be able to save this. No, not going to be able to. Cleaver going to come out. Ultimate front. There's like grab there from... Lyros <laughs> don't to get it. I can barely believe it. Gazer stayed so long toying with Texas A. Could have just tried to run in there and get the speed off of the E to get down on top of Texas A, but just dithered for way too long. He ends up donating the kill over to Texas A in the end. A massive misplay there by the Red Tails top laner. Texas A just just ever so patient. I mean it's it's win if you win win for him because even if he dies, he's wasted so much of Gazer's time. But you know, in the off chance that he lives there, which he ended up doing, you know, Lyros gets there and saves him, which is exactly what happened. Agree just looking for the counter strike there. Not gonna be in range to land that ability though. So is ultimately just gonna have to walk out. Alright. The the pause there, I, I just couldn't believe that Gazer had had his time so royally wasted by Texas A, who is gonna come back to this lane not all that much worse off than he has been the last couple of minutes. Is only just a couple CS down, and obviously the kill is going to feel good. Lyro's going to land another hook. Arctic going to go down, has no flash. The feel is, can he get anything? No, not able to, just out of range for some more of those chakrams. Arctic dropping to less than a quarter of his health. And a fantastic hook by Lyros, who's just landing those seemingly on demand. Doesn't have the glacial to make that even more excruciating. You have to feel like if he did have that glacial, it would be even worse. Uh, for Arctic getting hit by that Blitzcrank hook, but didn't so manage to get out there the last second. This is going to be Harold going the way of Arctic. I'm not sure what the question mark is about them picking it up. Lyro's looking for another hook here. He's going to land it on top of Devonji. He's going to get knocked up. No ultimate here for Arctic to buy time. Moonlight Vigil going wide. Zodiac ticking. Sliver of health. Just eating a little too much. The damage now ultimate for Arctic. Should just be absorbed by Lyros, so nobody's going to be dropping here from side of Sam Houston. Again, just a good hook there, though, but I think a bad trade there for the Sam Houston bottler. Just not able to get what he wanted in that one. It is going to have to be careful stepping up here, too, especially as Jen starts to get a couple more of these autos in. It's going to grab Navanji, who does have the ultimate. Flourish is not going to really hit on anybody, so ultimately that Renata ult going to go wide and not matter that much at all. Neither of those two bot laners really too close to hurt each other too much. And the duration of that ultimate is still very short. So Sam Houston, they can choose to try and keep Arctic and Navanji underneath this tower. Dre does have ultimate, could try to dive it. Green just let me just now ticking over to six. And still fairly healthy here for the Sam Houston support, so they could look for something. Ultimately, it's using not to, though. It's just going to be the full reset there for the Sam Houston bot lane. And again, just like in game one, the Sam Houston giving over some of those early kills, but then immediately catching it back up. And even a small gold read right here. Now, of course, it's only about a 300 gold lead, so nothing necessarily to write home about, but still impressive that they have tied up the score that quickly. Of course, a couple bad plays from some of the members of this Red Tail squad, giving over that gold, giving over the XP, and ultimately giving back over 
the lead, which is not something you want to do to this Sam Houston squad. They're very, very adept at punishing these mistakes that some of these teams make, and we've seen that time and time again with this Sam Houston White squad. And we just continue to see that uh, even through some of these smaller interactions. Zodiac just walking up to Novanji is going to get hooked up. Novanji does have flash, but is not going to use it. Pass is going to come out there and that E. But it's not going to be enough. Zodiac going to drop him. Gazer trading in that top lane. Texas A going to drop. And is not only going to drop and give the kill, but is going to leave over some of that XP and some of the gold there. So going to lose out on that. Will be a significant amount of time before he gets it. Lyros cannot miss on these hooks. That is another long range hook that hit. Zodiac gets another one. Harold coming down in the end. But it's, it's some of these fantastic plays from the Sam Houston bot lane that I can barely believe my eyes when I see them. I feel like every time Lyros Hook is going to miss, it doesn't. It, it always lands. And I honestly shouldn't be surprised anymore. Just like I shouldn't be surprised Dre in here. Ultimate not going to land at all. It does not affect Dre Gangs in the slightest. Puppy Cat going to turn around and use the ultimate double kill for Dre. The fade away face laser. Put the nail on that one. Two kills immediately donated back to Sam Houston on top of the bot lane kills. And again, Sam Houston always finding some sort of favorable trade no matter what. Dragons could eat a couple of turret shots as the minion wave expires there. But next dragon coming up. Sam Houston going to get the reset there. Should This should just be going their way. Should just be a full run out onto the map for both these Sam Houston bot laners. As well as Puppy Cat who's going to go ahead and reset. I don't think... The Puppy Cat will commit the ultimate to this play. This is not really a need to. Is Texas A just getting bullied in this top lane right now? Silence down on top of him. Gazer can't chase this if he wants to. He's going to eat some of those third shots. Finn to win again. And a miscalculation does end up giving over a kill. But it is a one for one. So Texas A not going to be participating in this fight. No teleport for that top laner. So this should just be a pure four on four for both of these teams as this dragon is going to start up. Again, yeah, Texas A, you try not to be too overly critical. Flash hook from. Lyros on top of Slam every single time and is just going to drop Puppy Cat. Doesn't even give me a chance to speak about it because Lyros has only got one thing on their mind and it's murder. And it's murder the mid laner. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Zodiac going to land on top of Navanji. Arctic may have been caught. Root's going to go down. Navanji going to land the ultimate just to buy a little bit of time. Dragon can still jump in on this if he wants to. Gets hooked back. Lyros. No way he lands another one, right? Is going to land another one! I don't even know why I thought he wouldn't. Lyra's just going to walk out of this one. It's absolutely ridiculous that they keep landing hooks like this. This Blitzcrank is a menace. I should never have doubted the Blitzcrank. So this is going to be this dragon going over to Sam Houston. Again, good trades across the board. Sam Houston just staying competitive, forcing the tempo here on this Red Tail squad. It just feels like every time Red Tail try and do something, Sam Houston respond and up the tempo every single time. They have a response for everything as the plate's going to start to expire here in the next 40 seconds. Not much of this neutral standing gold left on these towers beyond knocking them down. Left to get. Texas is going to knock that one down. Slam here to respond. Turret plating will soon fall. Sam Houston 2K gold lead ahead. And in the driver's seat right now, two dragons to their names so are going to be feeling happy about that one. You got two kills on Zodiac as well on that Aphelios, so he's in a very strong spot. Doesn't have an item completed yet, though. Only has the new trigger and boots, but will be completing the next item. Lyros misses a hook. I didn't think it was possible, but did happen. So, Levanji just going to be happy to survive that one for once. And Texas A just going to continue to send anything to Now, these minions don't have long left for the world. Ultimate going to go wide. But a great tower aggro balance there is Puppy Cat going to be a little bit late to that play. So Texas A going to drop once again two and four on this Mundo. But for as much as this Mundo has died, though, it's not necessarily a champion that you're super worried about. Never mind. We've got something going on in the bot lane. Lyra's going to land yet another hook. I can't even make the points I want to make because Moonlight Vid is going to drop down on top of him. Arctic has to get a kill, but not going to be able to. Is going to drive Zodiac. Going to collect that one. You know, one of these days I'll get to make a long-winded point, but it will only happen when Lyros isn't playing Blitzcrank because every time I, I think there's a moment to talk, Lyros just lands another hook and someone else dies. It's just, you, you see Lyros and Lyros sees you, and then but then you don't see anything because then you're going back to the fountain because Lyros just continues to hook people. And just so much value out of this pick right now, Sam Houston. Going to go ahead and start up this second Herald. But the point that I was going to make before I was rudely interrupted by a Blitzcrank that is... 
honestly causing this Red Tail squad so much grief. Uh, is that this Mundo's not necessarily too concerned about getting a lot of kills, right? It is a pick that just scales for, for its tankiness in the late game. It's, you know, it does good passive damage in terms of some of the AoE stuff that it has going on with the electric field and some of the healing. But ultimately, it's not a pick that you're going to expect to carry the game, right? That is for Puppy Cat. That is for Zodiac to do. Is Dragon's going to drop this Herald to knock down this top lane tower here. No plates to play for, obviously. But it is still going to get... And then Ray can activate the wind becomes lightning. Gazer getting his way out of this one. Harold still up though, so they could likely get a second charge out of it. No one yet on this Red Tail squad up there to respond to this. So it should just be the free play going the way of Sam Houston. Navaji gonna hook Lyros for once, and Lyros gonna turn right back around and hook Arctic. Even when you hook Lyros, Lyros hook you. Arctic going to drop flash out from Zodiac to secure the kill. Arctic not able to get anything out of that one. Trying to see if he could turn around and get one more auto into the Aphelios, but just nothing doing there. And a fight that Novanji wanted to pick got immediately turned around. Lyris is like, okay, you want to hook me? That's fine. Hey, that's a nice and squishy ADC you got there. I think I'll yoink that right over here so it can stand next to me. And that's exactly what Lyros will need to continue to do in this game, hooking some of these carries here for the side of Red Tails. Zodiac just going to let some more of those minions die to the tower, denying as much gold and experience as they can. It's the name of the game. If, uh, if you don't have to give it for free, don't. Okay, trying to land an up here. I think just trying to buy time for Texas to get here. Does have the ultimate if he needs to use it. And ultimately, this tower in this top lane still standing strong for Sam Houston, not yet dropped, even despite the repeated ganks. And pressure that Texas A has been put under, doing a tremendous job in holding on to that objective. And again, two tower lead here for Sam Houston, two dragons as well. Another dragon coming up in about a minute and 10 seconds. So Sam Houston well in control of this game. If we go through some of the itemization here across the board, starting to see completed items now for the bot laners. The top laners in the jungles obviously already have their items as well as the mid laners. We've got the stride breaker there ready for Garen, continuing to utilize that speed and that ability to jump forward and take fights. Met on the other side by that Frostfire Gauntlet there for Texas Day, so just looking to slow some of these attack heavy carries uh, on this Red Tail squad. And that is pretty much everybody here. I mean, Garen is largely going to work off of auto attacks. So is the Jax. I mean, so is uh, Cast to some de degree, um, making sure to land that, that silence, um, or sorry, that root on top of people, both with Navanji. And then with Arctic, so any kind of CC they have there, just making sure that those auto attacks that come out are going to be slowed. I think really the only auto non-auto attack dependent champion this entire lineup really is Novanji, who's just playing to use abilities. You could say the same for Cast, but it does uh, largely is largely going to use those autos and Qs to set up on some of the damage that Cast does use, utilize out of the kit. So again, especially with Petrifying Gaze, it's going to be huge too. Texas A going to find Gazer on this top lane. Texas A is still not able to win this trade right now, though, especially with the stride breaker that Garen has. He's going to drop under Hathic. Not going down. Flash out from Texas A. Can he wait this one out? Zilpin is going to go on down on top of him, but Gazer does not have teleport to get in this fight. And Curtain Call ultimately not getting a whole lot done there for Arctic, so Garen just going to continue to shove in his top lane. Is Lyros lands yet another hook. Arctic is dead yet again, and they should just be yet another dragon going the way of Sam Houston. So one for one trade across the board. And the third Drake for Sam Houston. This will put them on drag point. They're going to trade it for a turret in that top lane. Gage is going to go ahead and get himself out of there. This is Sam Houston squad looking to get their way in. Puppy Cat lands the root. But Slam not in too much danger there, especially with Navanji waiting in the wings. Lyros wants to land another one. He does. I don't know why I keep getting surprised, but he gets yet another kill. Puppy Cat steals it from Zodiac. Petrifying Gaze comes out just to buy a little bit of a lease on life. Lyros is an absolute menace in this game. Just seemingly cannot miss on these hooks. What an amazing performance. Moonlight Vigil with the ultimate. Zodiac gets it in the end, though. So all's fair in love and war, and in the end, Zodiac gets his kill. A takeaway there from Puppycat after taking the kill on to Novanji. So all's fair. All's evened up in terms of the score there for both of those Sam Houston members. I'm sure they'll be having a laugh about that one. So it looks like Puppy Cat was going to get it. I guess the last little bit of ticking damage there for Zodiac was enough to get it. And now Sam Houston still very much in control of this game, even despite the loss of a couple turrets, allowing Gazer to continue to push in that top lane. Three dragons well ahead in kills. Pretty significant goal lead, just under 4K. And Texas A, again, we talked about earlier with this Mundo, is not worried about being a damage threat, is not worried about 
getting bullied so far in this top lane. Obviously, it is a little bit of a problem if you're giving over too many kills, but at 2-4, and four, it's not too bad. It's more or less focused on just applying pressure in this top lane and forcing Gazer to respond to him and not look for any sort of team fights. As Lyros looking for another hook, doesn't land it in the end, doesn't know where Slam, doesn't know where Egregious is. So opting not to take that fight there. But I hold my breath because every time Lyros hits that E, gets a little bit of speed and looks for the hook, it's you know, it's it's something that could turn into a game winning team fight every time Blitzcrank lands a big hook. And lands that knockup, and again, especially when you have a lot of when you get to late game and, and, and players have a lot of late game items. A lot of times, what you'll see Blitzcranks do is they'll use that W to get in range and then proc the E for the, uh, the knockup and then land the hook point point range for the additional duration to CC. Just because some of those long range hooks can be difficult to land, but Lyros demonstrating that they don't at all have a problem with landing those skill shots really from any angle across any wall in any part of the map. So Sam Houston going to continue to look to continue setting up those plays with this Blitzcrank. Any member that gets picked over a wall or from long range underneath the turret, Sam Houston is just going to die just because of the follow-up that Sam Houston does have. Slam waiting in that bush. Puppy Cat throwing out the ability. Root's going to go wide. And if you've got to come down, prevent Puppy Cat just from walking up to it. But as soon as it expires, it's just going to go and take that one. Gets grounded for a very brief duration, but it's going to be enough to donate the ward kill. More Dominix regards also out for Zodiacs. They're going to be able to shred through some of this armor that Garen and the Jack's going to try and build and make that uh, attack damage stick just a little bit more. Especially in some of these longer late game team fights, especially if a, a fight goes longer than you know, 10, 20 seconds. You're going to want to be able to shred through some of those frontline members of this Red Tail squad. Now Sam Houston, because they have this lead, they, they can take their time with this. They're not on a rush at all. They can continue to play for Dragons. They can continue to look for Baron. Continue just to shove out these waves. They know it's going to be a long time before Jin's really going to be effective in this game before he comes online. He is only sitting on the one item in boots, so you know, feeling like a little bit of a bargain been picked right now. Zodiac just a very, very dangerous carry at this point of the game. And every time Lyros hits that W, it's the potential for someone to get picked. About a minute and ten seconds here for Sam Houston before they get to take a crack at this next dragon. What I want to see from Red Tails, I want to see them try and continue to apply pressure with this Garen, continue to shove out that wave, and then make make his way over to some of these team fights because I think that's something that this Red Tail squad is losing right now is just a little bit of frontline longevity, just to buy you know someone like Arctic or Slam enough time to get into the fight and get their damage down because you know these aren't necessarily champions that are going to just instantly blow you up. They take a couple of seconds to really make their damage stick and to whittle the health bars away, and I think that's something that Red Tails are going to have to figure out what they want to do here, because ultimately Garen's putting in a side lane. It will get you some, you know, some advantages and give you some tempo, but if you're not snowballing that into an objective, or if you're not moving around the map to make the most use of it, then ultimately it's going to be for naught, unless, you know, somehow Garen can just take a tower and an inhibitor, you know, in that top side, which is not going to be very likely. Again, Texas A does have the teleport to either join a fight from that top lane or go back up to it as Lyro signs another hook. And you know who's dead again? Egregious. Egregious is dead. Three times, another hook. It's the same old story. Lyro's just an absolute menace right now in this game. It's just, you can't go anywhere without getting hooked by Blitzcrank. If, even if you're in your own base, just assume that Lyro's is there going to hook you. Just like this. Flash out from Arctic manages to avoid getting hooked and would have died and so had to commit that summoner. And this fourth dragon is just going to go completely uncontested here to Sam Houston. There's just nothing that this Red Tail squad can do about it. They're just waiting in this bush, hovering around this dragon, but with just no attempt to take this, they don't have the damage. They don't even have the ability to tank it very well just because Garen doesn't have tank items right now. Neither does Egregious. He's only just not getting here. Lyros is going to land this hook. He's going to turn around. He's going to land it. Nope, he's going to knock up. Gazer to prevent the damage going down from top of Zodiac, who's going to get deleted in the end. Trade one for one, though. Curtain call activated and then deactivated. I thought maybe Lyros wanted to try and hook somebody over, but no, was correctly asserting that they needed to buy time to peel Gazer off of Zodiac, but not able to do so. So, And that's that's how Red Tails gets back in this game, is continuing to get on top of the Ethelios, making sure that he doesn't have time to fight very long in these team fights, making sure that he's constantly down, so that way Sam Houston are missing that big damage threat. So look to continue, look to see Red Tails continue to do that. 
And again, Gazer can repeat that play a couple more times, both just with having the Stride Breaker and having access to Flash. And with his Ignite coming up here soon, um, so that is another threat that he'll have to throw on top of Zodiac, who is... Uh, does still have the Flash, but is still going to be relatively vulnerable in those fights if they do, they're not keeping track of Garen, and Garen does get on that back line. But ultimately, beyond that small flub there from the side of Zodiac, just in that small skirmish in the river, fairly clean gameplay from Sam Houston despite some of the early game troubles. 9-17 to 17 so far in this game. Lyros lands another hook, and this is Nobunji dying. Tries to flash over the wall, just bounces off of it, off the bouncy council, and... I mean, it's just, it's almost like a broken record at this point. Lavros lands a hook, and up, ah, somebody from Red Tails dies. It's, and again, the follow up there from Sam Houston, too, though, and that's the most important part, has always been there. Every time Lavros is landing these hooks, there's someone behind them to make sure that the damage sticks. And with no support right now, it is a fairly short timer, but it is going to be difficult for this Red Tail squad to even try and make their way in here. Is Lavros looking for a pick here? Does have the extra movement speed? Deadly Flourish going to hit on top of Texas A, who's just going to eat that one. Now Sam Houston, what do they want to do here? Getting the midway being shoved in. Losing priority. Lyros lands another hook on top of the Garen. That may not be the one they wanted, so Zodiac not going to have to peel for his life. Is going to flash out. Gazer does blow the Ignite. Or does, sorry, does not have the Ignite to blow. So not going to be able to get it out there. So good pick there by Lyros. And pulling it to Zodiac, maybe not the play you want to make. Is ultimately going to come out for Dragon. Agree just trying to get in. Does manage to land a Counter-Strike. Drag Gang's crashing out, flashing out. What else can he get? Lyra's landing another hook on top of Slam. It's a scattered team fight. Nobody's dead yet. Slam, can he get the first one to get a kill? Not going to be able to. Zodiac gets that one. One's going to two, he's going to drop. Three is going to drop. Sam Houston, they're going to win that team fight, and they're going to go over to the Baron. Sorry, it was actually four in the end after Arctic got picked at the beginning there. This should just be the Baron going Sam Houston's way. And again, so many little health bars really at the beginning of that fight. It looked like Zodiac was going to drop. It looked like maybe they were going to be able to get... Dre ganks even through the ultimate, but no, a flash away denied the kill. And another team fight wins me, Sam Houston. They're just going to pick up this Baron, reset, and then run out back onto the map. Elder in about another two minutes and 50 seconds, but they can't just look to shove these lanes. And, you know, when you try and approach a game realistically, especially, you know, from a casting point of view, it is difficult to see how Red Tails get back this in this one, honestly, because beyond Garen getting some kind of lucky attack, a lucky flank really on Zodiac or a couple of squishier members here for the side of Sam Houston, whether it be Puppy Cat or Dragon to find a duel there. It is going to be very difficult for them to get back in this game. Smite coming down to Texas A, though. He's not going to be slowed for very long, though. The ground is going to come down on top of Texas A. Can he walk out of this one? He's going to activate the ultimate. The Petrifying Gaze is going to go wide. Slam with the Qs does manage to get him down, but it's a full court press here in the mid lane from Sam Houston. They're going to start to put the damage into these towers. Two members bot lane means that they should just have free access to the tower. Texas A will be up in time for the next Dregs. Puppy Cat going to click a kill there on top of the Bonji, despite the tower. Another hook on top of Gazo. Zodiac going to click that one up this time. The Garen's not getting away. And a double kill for Zo sorry for Puppy Cat underneath the turret. Nobody is safe. And Lyros, not content, going to land another hook. Pulls Slam right back into the team. And Sam Houston. Just completely and utterly dominant in this game so far. A rampage for Zodiac 12, 1, and 5. They're going to knock down this tower. Sam Houston, this honestly might be the end of the game. They have the super empowered minions for the next couple of minutes. So they can just look to end this right now. First inhibitor is for sure going to fall. Two members up there for the side of the Red Tail squad. But most importantly, the carry, specifically the Garen. And the cast not up yet. Sam Houston, though, deciding that they want to play it safe and that they're going to be careful and just get themselves on out of here. They're going to take the hex gate out. And deny as much of this minion farm as they can. Puppy Cat going to pick up this blue buff. Zodiac's going to pick up the Gromp. And ultimately, Sam Houston going to pick up an even more significant gold lead. 45 to 54, so just under a 9k gold lead for them. And Sam Houston, again, just another display of dominance in this game. And particularly from this ADC, Zodiac just... It seems like he gets so much work done in a lot of these games, and these last two rounds have been no exception against this this matchup between the Red Tails, the Red Tails, and I think just ultimately a, a fantastic, uh, I think series of play this whole season from him is looking to go wide there. That is the second only hook at really in this game to go wide for Lyros. And again, just this ever-present threat of this Blitzcrank, looking one of these important members. So Gazer, I think, full committing to split here. Another hook goes wide from Lyros, not able to grab Novanji. 
on that Renato over the wall, but I think they're fine with this. I think if Sam Houston, I think you just go ahead and give the, the handshake on this one. And actually, this is actually a bad trade. This is actually not the right decision here from Red Tails because Sam Houston are going to have the ability to shove this very, very quickly. All you're going to get is a couple of turrets if you are this Red Tail squad. Sam Houston going to pick up the Elder. Yes, you do a bit of, get a bit of gold this goal, but what is it going to cost you? Sam Houston, though, deciding not to run bottling. They're going to go top lane and respond to this. They might have looked to just continue to grab some of those turrets in that bot lane and just shove it to get another inhibitor. Flash out from Lyra's not going to land on top of anybody with the hook. Sam Houston just responding to that pressure being showed in the top lane by the Red Tails, deciding they don't want to give up too much of their base. As Ping's going down on top of Cass. And again, Sam Houston pinging towards this bot side. They have shoving waves in the mid lane with those super minions, so they can just look to start to siege on this bot tower. Just leave Texas A in that top lane. Honestly, at this point, you probably don't need him to win the team fight as long as the Garen doesn't get any sort of flanking and with no wards really or this Red Tail squad, no way to teleport to anything. I mean, there is a small, there is one ward in that 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 Krug's bush right there that they might could play towards, but I'm not sure that you would want Slam Daddy trying to get in there to make a flank on a Cassiopeia unless you could for sure get that petrifying gaze on the multiple people. I was going to land another hook. It's going to die immediately. Puppy Cat with that Elder Drake. Petrifying gaze goes wide. Hits a couple of people, but not enough to do anything. Zodiac unstoppable. Bordering on going legendary there. 13, 1, and 6. And Sam Houston, this is just going to be the final final run here for them. The last little bit of damage they need. Arctic going to get rooted up. and is just going to get killed by the Elder Drake. Agreed just trying to get on top of him, but Lyro says, get over here or get off of my mid laner. And you know who else is going to die? Also the top laner. So that means he gets to join his friends in the death chamber. Sam Houston going to knock down this final Nexus Tower. And they're going to put the finishing touch on this series. Sam Houston, they improve to 4-1. and one, And they defeat the Hawkeye CC Red Tails. Executed.